On today's show, when Minnesota's Red River makes the news, it's usually high water. But the Red is also famous for something else, big catfish and lots of them. We're going to go catting on the Red. And next, a company called Bending Branches, well-named, because if you paddle a canoe or kayak, chances are you're bending one of their branches. Andrew, we're here on Lake Calhoun. Later, Laura Shera tries a new water sport, paddle boarding. All you need is, well, balance. And our Minnesota Bound Classic this week remembers two of the oldest anglers ever to share a boat on Minnesota Bound, remembering Ed and Floyd. Look at that. That's the kind. Those stories huh? and more That's next. <laughs> Minnesota Bound. Brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. Hi, everybody. Raven and I welcome you to the show. You know, lots of us fish in Minnesota, mostly for walleye, bass, bluegills, you name it. But what about catfish? Anybody ever think about catfish? Hey, grab your stink bait and let's go catch them. Travis Frank has the story. In the land of 10,000 lakes, walleye is king. But to those who chase catfish, Minnesota's Red River ranks number one. We've got sunken wood, we got root balls, we got all kinds of stuff on the shallow side. There's virtually no current, and there's fish here. Fish, fish, there's a couple fish there. Trophy channel cats lurking around every bend. The Red River's been known for decades as the finest channel cat fishing in America. There's potential for 30 pounds. There could be a 20 pounder at the end of every hook set. There really could be. The Mighty Red draws anglers worldwide. Everybody knows about it, and it's kind of that trip of a lifetime. When they come, odds are good they'll call Captain Brad Durick. He's known as the face of the Red. With freshly caught bait, we put out our spread. Each cast perfectly placed according to the flow of the current. Then, it's only a matter of time. There you go. Is he on? There you go. Give him a little set. There you go. Got him. Got him. Oh, it's a baby. Well, he's not a monster at all, but he is my first Red River catfish. You got to start somewhere, right? I'm going to put him back. We've got a 20 pounder waiting. I've always kind of been the black sheep, whether I like it or not. And you know, I'm, I'm a cat guy in a walleye world now. But when the rod bends, nobody complains. Hey, Sean. That's a better hit. Yeah, yeah. That's he, how it's He did not work. mess around. There That's you go. a little better. Nice. That's a little better. Now we're talking. Now we got one. This is probably about an average size. This is uh, how big is that? A middle of the road. He's probably nine pounds. Bottom line, when you think about why people come here, mm -hmm. it's about the fight. That's what kind of drew me to him in the first place. Guiding wasn't on the list of things to do. That just kind of happened. In fact, it wasn't until Brad turned 22 that he casted his first line. First fish ever? Yeah. When I was 22 years old, just out of college. His first battle with a cat changed his life forever. Oh, nice fish. Hey, oh, we got attitude anyway. Yeah, he just came to life. There we go. That's a little better. <laughs> There, there we, we go. go. He's carried a little, little midsummer weight. There you go, pal. Thanks for stopping. At first, it was about the fight. The second was learn how to catch fish consistently, and then it was put people on fish, enjoy the excitement of them catching fish. You got him. <clears throat> Come on, baby. And out from under you. Another you one go. of those middle-sized ones. That took about three minutes. That's how it's supposed to work. Nice. That's a beautiful fish. That one was on the frog? That was frog. If we run out of frogs, I'm running up in the weeds and getting some more, because they are loving this right now. Well, from that point on, we started catching bigger fish, and how do you catch, you know, get on bigger fish, and you know, what makes these things tick. 
In a river that changes by day, Brad developed his own pattern and wrote a book on it. Cracking the channel catfish code. Nobody had ever written about this stuff. Nobody ever talks about this stuff. I've taken everything I've put together and put it in one spot. And his results speak for themselves. There's always a contest between me and the fish. Come on, fish. There we go. Nice. There we go. Nice. Brad, that's that's a, what I'm talking that's a nice about. fish. Myself and everybody who lives and experiences this every day are just flat out lucky to have what we have. They do come bigger, solid, clean catfish. That's why people come up here. Ooh. See ya. Good job. Got it. When we return, the story of bending branches, makers of paddles and such. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. Connecticut. The Minnesota Agricultural Water Resources Coalition. And by Starkey Hearing Technologies. Up next, you know, we always take for granted some of our outdoor products that we use every day. We don't think about how they're made, like paddles, canoe paddles, kayak paddles. Let's take a look, because we found out how they're made. One of life's subtle pleasures communicated each time a paddle touched through calm water. Self-powered travel is an art, much the same as the act of creating the gear. At Bending Branches Wisconsin facility, workers start with locally harvested wood, lightweight but strong natural materials. Uh, we got butternut here, that's 3 quarter inch by 1.75. The wood remains at the core of a bending branch's paddle, just as it always has. The company long ago outgrew locations in St. Paul and Minneapolis, eventually finding its current home in Osceola. People really like the feel of a wood paddle. It's warm in your hands, it feels alive, uh, soft, very comfortable. All right. Workers match different strips of wood to create the basic DNA of a paddle. This machine is uh, like a giant microwave. The pieces that we chopped are now into a basic blank. As the roughed out design moves down the line, woodworker Ron Haltman adds Bending Branch's special secret sauce. The rock guard is gonna be the tip material on the end of the paddle when we're done. A recipe brainstormed by company founder Dale Kicker. I got the bright idea of combining the Kevlar fiber into a plate material and incorporating it onto the canoe paddle for more tip durability. Well, the idea worked. All Bending Branches paddles now have the signature tip. We're going to bring it down to the actual finished thickness size, and that happens in about uh, 30, 35 seconds. A heavy-duty sanding machine takes the rough stock down to the perfect paddle. Uh, it's about 295, that's where I like to see them. It is right here that woodwork goes high-tech. Okay, so the program's in there for this particular paddle. The cutting machine further shapes and refines each paddle. bit more handwork, and this piece is complete. Only after one special ad does the paddle go to the final dip tank. Well, we're making tens of thousands of paddles and growing uh, fairly rapidly, so that number just keeps increasing every year. You got it? Maybe Bending Branch's success goes back to that first sensation, the very moment when a new paddle touches water. Well, the 
of the best parts about working for a company that builds paddles is you get to take the afternoon off, grab a few team members and go out on the river, um, do some research and test out our product fully. You know, we enjoy that, it's a, it's a great benefit of working here. This pedal here has been all the way to York Factory, 2,500 miles on it. The ultimate reason for paddling and for being outside is, is taking in nature and taking in what we have to offer. Very uh, enjoyable experience being outside and being with people you care about and having a good time and smiling. Taking in nature. This will be our starting point. This is the Lake Cruiser. Still ahead, Laura Shera hops on board a water sport called Paddle Boardy. You might get wet. Closed captioning is brought to you by by the Yard, premier manufacturers of maintenance-free outdoor patio furniture and accessories from recycled plastic. Welcome back, and if you're just joining us, we just finished a story about how paddles are made. Well, Laura Shera has found a relatively new sport involving paddles called paddle boarding. Paddle boarding. It's emerging as the fun new way to work out, enjoy the sun, and take in some nature, all on the water. Now it looks simple enough, but how do I get started? Hi, Andrew. Hi, Laura. So I am a fitness fanatic, and okay. I've been dying to try some paddle boarding. Well, paddle boarding is an excellent workout, a great way to stay in shape or to get fit. It's a full body workout. Well, I have to tell you, these boards look a little intimidating because of their size. So where do I begin to find the right one for me? Well, there's a few different types of paddle boards. So let me walk through each of them with you, and we'll see which one works best. So this will be our starting point. This is the Lake Cruiser. It's kind of a classically designed surfboard that's been elongated to paddleboard length. Some of the nice features with it is it cruises on the water really well. It turns fairly well, but the downside is with it being just a hair narrower than some of the other paddleboards that are out there, it doesn't quite balance quite as easily. Well, considering I'm a beginner, I'm not sure if this one is probably for me. Do you have anything else? Well, here's the next board that I have to show you. This one's called the Touring Boat. It's a lot easier to balance on compared to the Lake Cruiser, and it's been designed to be able to hold a straight track. It'll be able to slice through the water very quickly, very easily. Would this board move too fast for me if I'm a beginner? It wouldn't move through the water too quickly for you. The downside with this boat is that it wouldn't turn very well. So this again is maybe for someone who's more advanced. A little more advanced, has a little bit of technique behind them, is looking really more for exercise or potentially training for paddleboard racing. I'm noticing it doesn't have the foot grip here. From the bow to the stern, it's basically been turned into one giant yoga mat, so it's tacky and able to be stood on no matter where you are on the board. So you're telling me I can do a downward dog on this thing? Yes, you could, or if it's me, a downward kasploosh. Well, I love yoga, and one thing I don't want to do is fall in the water, so the fact that this has one giant foot grip, I think I'll take it. So I have three paddles here for you to take a look at. This one is the first one. It's a little more of a basic design, basic build. It's aluminum construction with a plastic blade. Officially, you should be about five to seven inches above your head is the official height. And a good way to double check and see that is actually to raise your arm into the air and your palm should be able to just rest right up against the paddle. A couple other options that you can get. There's a carbon fiber one. So this blade here is made out of carbon fiber. This one here can be adjusted. Pop this knob out and you can slide and adjust this blade exactly to what height you need. The third option I have for you is a little more of a nicer looking paddle. This is a wood blade with a carbon fiber shaft. Now that we've seen the paddles, is there one that strikes you as the one you want? I like number two because it's lightweight and it's also adjustable. Perfect. So here we have a life jacket that should work out pretty well for you. Let's say we give it a try and see how it fits. There is one more thing that you are going to need in the state of Minnesota, and that's going to be license and registration. So once you have your registration in place, then you're good to go. Let's hit the lake. All right, Andrew, we're here on Lake Calhoun, and I am ready for my morning paddleboarding workout. Pick the boat up. Come on in the water here. So the easiest way to get on a paddleboard the first time is to get on your knees right where the handle is. This will be your balance point when you're standing up on the board. You have a nice little center of gravity. Go on all fours and walk your way into a stand. So there are two different types of strides to work on as far as the basic paddling is. One is close into the boat. The other type of paddle there is, is the sea stroke, much like a canoe, which will allow you to really rapidly rotate the boat and turn it around. What do you say, Laura? Sure.
Well, that wraps it up for today's adventure. And if you're not quite ready to invest in a paddleboard, you're in luck because right here on Lake Calhoun, you can rent one. You gotta get started somewhere, but most important, just get outside. When that barber goes down, set the hook. Coming up, our Minnesota Bound Classic remembers two very memorable anglers, Ed and Floyd, representing more than two centuries of fishing in a boat. All my ears, I never figured out. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Jesse Treble Foundation Systems and Safe Basements Waterproofing, Radco Truck Accessories, Game Fair, and by Seven Clans Casino. Time now for our Minnesota Bound Classic, and a classic indeed it is. You know, if you're a fisherman, very seldom do you get the chance to share a fishing boat with a couple of guys, both more than 100 years old. Fish for walleye or, or, or bluegills? For whatever we can catch. That's a good plan. <laughs> yeah, today it's going to be a little bit slow, I think. They're probably in the deep water now, too. When it comes to fishing, well, this is a boatload of experience. You never know on a hot day, though. No, that's true. Yeah, and they're going to be towards the bottom. If anybody should know how to catch them, this fellow should. There's a couple of nice ones in there. He's Floyd Doty of Glenwood, Minnesota, born March 25th, 1901. Floyd's running the boat for his fishing buddy, Ed Barcel of Maple Lake. Ed's a year younger. I can just sit out here and relax and forget everything. I don't everything. think you ever get tired of fishing. Two centuries of fishing trips, and they're still watching bobbers. What do you got? Oh, nothing. Weeds. Weeds. You hooked the weeds. Boy, oh, I really, was a, yeah. really thought I had something. That was an exciting weed. <laughs> weed or fish, fish or weed, it's no big deal. Living more than a century, now that's a big deal. Yeah, that's the first one I fished was over a hundred. You see, when you meet another one, then you can't say you're king of the mountain anymore. <laughs> that, that stops right there. Yeah, right there. In their younger days, Floyd was a farmer. Ed worked in the Twin Cities. Their wives are both gone now, even some of their children. All right, let's go catch them, Floyd. Floyd seems almost timeless. When he was younger, just a century old, we shared a boat together. He ran the motor. He also caught most of the fish. Oh, it's a big bull sunfish. One summer day when Ed oh, was just 100 years old, we were in panfish heaven. Look at that's, there. That's the kind. Huh? Hey, that's worth $2 now, I think. Two? <laughs> well, I don't know how anybody could get old fishing. Do you, Ed? No, I don't. It keeps you alive. That's what keeps you going. You get all that exercise, work up a good appetite. Uh-huh. Then you go home and go to bed and you dream about what you did. <laughs> <laughs> Together in a fishing boat, the two ageless anglers are surprised by nothing. All of my years, I never figured out how to make fish bite when they don't want to. So they leave us with one more lesson in life. I you, got him yet. You got him. You got that. Hey! It's not the size of the fish that matters. Very simply, you're just never too old to brag a little. Yeah, who's the best fisherman we found that? Yes, sir, I'm old, older, I have a little more knowledge of it. <laughs> oh, boy. You earned it. Oh, boy. I earned the money at my age. Ed and Floyd no longer with us, but guess what? I'm hoping to be 100 and fishing too. That about does it for us. Remember, introduce a kid to the great outdoors and my romantic star of the show here is Raven. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433. For more information on these stories and more, catch us on the web at mnbound.com.